Luca. I made a channel called Pedal Partners to talk about shoegaze mainly, but also I sometimes talk about other bands and scenes I like, in particular if they're from my local area in the UK. Today I'm looking at a band called Pink Floyd. I'm sure everyone who's watching this video has heard of them. They have their roots in British psychedelia and they have some of the top selling albums of all time. Pink Floyd's Breathe is the first song I remember hearing ever in my entire life. Now some people say you can't remember that far back, but I know somewhere deep down in my subconscious is that song. It resonates with me very strongly. So today I'm going to be looking at the gear that Pink Floyd have used through the years, mostly guitar stuff, guitars, amps and pedals. And the, the main members I'm going to be looking at today is mostly David Gilmour and a bit of a Sid Barrett. People have said I look like Sid Barrett sometimes, which is funny. And also a great compliment because what a legend of British music. Now, fair warning, this video is going to be comprehensive. We don't do things by halves here at Pedal Partners. So if you enjoy it, definitely subscribe. We've done some other videos like this. We've done one on Radiohead. Stay live and there's just a bunch of fun videos that I think a lot of you will enjoy. I'm going to be playing all original compositions today. I like improvising stuff on the spot. Uh, I don't really like playing other bands music for a couple of reasons, namely I don't own the rights to their music so I think you should go support the artists we feature in our video by going buying all their music and t-shirts and all the good stuff there. Well, if you want to support us you can do the same for us. <laughs> um, and also I just, yeah, I just enjoy creatively just writing my own music. It's what I do in life, it's what I enjoy. So I hope you enjoy this video, we're going to be looking at some fun gear. Gilmore's main guitar throughout his career has been his Black Fender Strat. He actually recently auctioned off a trier. Uh, he auctioned off a lot of his guitar collection. Originally, it was a Samba Strat, but by the time he brought it from Manny's in New York, it had been refinished in the iconic black color. So I always like linking things back to the channel in one way or another, because I'm just extra like that. So today's little fact is that the winner of that auction for his Black Strat was actually the owner of the Indianapolis Colts. And today, this video is being filmed in Indiana. So even when we're not in England, we're still we're still linking back to the artists that we're featuring in our video. Ampire's Gilmore has mostly used high watt DR-103's custom heads for most of his career, particularly from 1969 to 1987 and 1994 onwards. He's also used a variety of Fender amps, such as a Fender Concert, Twin Reverb, Twin Reverb Head, Twin Tweed, and Princeton 65. Today I'll be using my Fender amp, which is a deluxe reverb. Now my favorite part, the pedals. So firstly, David Gilmer is one of the most surprising users ever of the wonderful, faithful Boss HM2. So we've had the HM2 a lot on the channel, including the Waza version, so definitely go check out our videos on that. But today I also have the wonderful Hellmelter from Electro Harmonics. It's a really nice circuit and I just love there's lots of different controls that I can use to, to really shape in that HM2 sound that I love so much. Gilmore described his process for using this pedal as follows. The sound that I'm using a lot of the time is going through a Boss HM2 Heavy Metal, to a Boogie amplifier, to an MXR DDL, and then onto a regular Fender amp. I use a DDL on it because I find it stops the fuzz box from sounding like a fuzz box. It smooths off the unpleasant raw frequencies that you get from the fuzz box. Then you get a nice sort of sound. Gilmore has used a variety of big muffs throughout his career, most commonly his original Ram's Head, 70s ram's head on solos such as comfortably numb there's a wide variety of big muffs available nowadays so gimbal's also used triangle muffs but today i've got an op amp and i've also got the hardware muff which is really cool and i was really excited when this came out but uh you can get lots of different there's different nuanced sounds between the muffs so it's really fun just to, to collect them all and try them gotta catch them all <laughs> Other fuzz and distortion pedals that Gilmore's used include a classic fuzz face, Boss Metalizer and Boss FZ2. I don't have any of those pedals. I just like you guys, I don't have every pedal, but I do have the new Earthquake Azor, which is really cool. So it's kind of got classic sounds like a like a classic fuzz, like such as a fuzz face, but it's also got more modern precise sounds. You can power it with 18 volts for extra headroom. It's got a touch sensitive amp-like quality to it. <laughs> 
One of the most important parts of a Pink Floyd tone is a uni vibe. One of the things I love about this channel is we always get new pedals to try out on. Next up, I've got the Eventide Riptide. We love Eventide stuff and I love uni vibe. It's a, it's a big part of Pink Floyd's sound, especially the, the 70s stuff. Tell me, listen to Dark Side of the Moon and tell me that you, you don't hear this over all the guitar tones. Just a classic Univox U915 uni vibe is what Gilmore was using back then. He would later then go and replace it with an MX Phase 90 pedal. But for the 70s stuff, there's just so much uni vibe on those records. <laughs> The delay sound I've always really liked is the Vincent Ekerek, an Italian made delay unit that was used extensively by Pink Floyd, especially in the earlier part of the career. Now I'm going to go over Sid Barrett's effects in just a second, his gear he used, but when Gilmore inherited his role in Pink Floyd, he was using a similar setup to Sid, and that included a Vincent Ekerek. Richard was also using it on the keyboards. And Gilmore himself used it from 68 to about 77 when he replaced it with easier to maintain digital units than Binson Ekerix, a very mechanical in nature. So we've got a Binson mode here, the drum echo on the new Nemesis ADT from Source Audio. Gilmore used a Boss DD2 throughout various parts of his career. Today, I'm going to be using a Boss DD8, which has got a warm mode which is similar to the, the warmer sound of the early digital units. I really appreciate the, the early boss units. And you probably know that if you've watched this channel before, definitely go check out the stuff I've done on stuff like the Boss PS2. I've actually got a, a nice demo of the DD8. So the warm mode on here is really nice, emulates some of those classic early digital sounds. <laughs> Next up, we have this lovely little compressor from Electro Harmonics. Now, Gilmore's used a variety of compressors over his career, including stuff from MXR and Boss. But today, I'm just going to be using this one. It's a platform compressor, so it's kind of based on studio technology. And I think a, a big part of like getting those classic vintage sounds is is the stuff like the the kind of stuff they were using at Abbey Road. I've got some plugins that mimic some Abbey Road stuff that I enjoy. And so I do like gear that is based on the classic studio stuff, such as this compressor. During the 80s and 90s, Gilmore used the Boss CT a lot. As you can imagine, during those years, lots of chorus was being used. So he used the CE2, uh, but today we've got the, the classic CE1 in this pedal. Definitely go check out the the, the like full in-depth thing we did with this, this pedal. Lots of people enjoyed it, so I really enjoy this pedal. <laughs> Gilmore used the Electro Harmonics Electric Mistress Flanger throughout the 70s and up to 83, and he would have been one of the first users of this pedal. Uh, the, the pedal originally came out from Electro Harmonics in 1976, and he was first photographed with it around that time. And then it was used on the Animals Tour in 77, and then progressively on other tours such as for the Wool and Final Cut. Today I've got the Walking Moon Flanger from Electro Harmonics, going to be based on similar architecture to the original Electric Mistress, and it's also got the, the filter matrix setting there. The 
next pedal I'm going to feature is a really cool one. It's the EMS Synthy High Fly. Now, that was actually developed by a, a genius fella called David, who later would go on to work with Electro Harmonics. And he developed a lot of cool stuff, such as the ones I'm holding, stuff like the Small Stone, the Memory Man Hazare, the Pog. So, some of the early Electro Harmonics units would have been based on that Synthy. A shout out to him. I always like to shout out these. These people, these pioneers behind the scene, they always fascinate me. As creative people, we couldn't do what we do without the work of these genius engineers. Sid Barrett used a variety of guitars, mostly stuff like Fender Tellies and other quirky offsets, including Dan Electro stuff. I've got a quirky offset here today in the Fender Meteor so I'm going to be playing this guitar for some Sid stuff. A big part of Sid sound was the Salma Stereo Master amp. And these are quite hard to come by nowadays, so I don't have one, but all I'm saying is that when I'm back in the UK, Denmark Street, you better watch out for me coming to get all your weird and quirky stuff. I've always thought Roger Mayer pedals were pretty cool, and um, that's because people like Kevin Shields and Jimmy, Jimi Hendrix were using them. And Sid also used a wedge-shaped Octavia from Roger Mayer. Today I'm going to be using the Octasen on our Violet Oscillation pedal. And I recently put out a glow-in-the-dark version of this pedal, and it's just Honestly, just such a beautiful thing. Um, we we did the artwork in collaboration with Grindle. Pedals made in collaboration with Grindle over as uh, Life Isn't Fair. And all I can say is Life Isn't Fair just makes the most beautiful pedals. Like, such a pretty thing. And it makes pretty sounds. I really like the, the early age of effects. So another fuzz pedal that was reportedly used by Sid was the Salma Buzz Tone, which was reportedly used on Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And also a solar sound Tone Bender Mark II, which we have a, a modern emulation here in the TB2W from Boss and Solar Sound. Mm -hmm. 